evening, everyone. We're going to call the meeting of the Development Review Board for City of Montpelier to order. My name is Daniel Richardson. I serve as chair of the board. Uh, the other members from my right are Rob Goodwin, Kevin O'Connell, Meredith Crandall, staff, Kate McCarthy, Ryan Kane. All right. Um, as a preliminary, uh, actually, let's approve the agenda. Uh, does anybody have any additions, changes to the agenda? Mr. Chair, I'll make the motion to accept the agenda as uh, as printed uh, for uh, October 7th, 2019. Okay, motion by Kevin. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Kate. Uh, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. We have an agenda. Off to a good start. Uh, the comments from the chair this evening are as follows. There are five of us here on a board that normally sits seven. Uh, so any applicant coming forward tonight, you're welcome to go forward, but if you feel as if you would benefit from two additional members, the requirement of, and let me take a step back, the voting requirement remains four. So for any application, four affirmative votes are required for us to approve whatever application, appeal, um, or modification you put forward tonight. Um, it's just you have less of a margin of error with five of us. Or if one of us has to recuse for an application, um, that means just four. So all four would have to agree. Uh, so you do have that option, and I'll just simply put it out there that you can ask to continue your application to another night when we have the other two members there. Mr. Kaplan? Can you guarantee that there will be more members if we wait? I can't guarantee for any given night. I will say that uh, it is unusual for us to be down to five. We have uh, one alternate and we have one full-time member who could not make it tonight. Um, so the last meeting we had uh, close to a full contingency. Um, we had actually the full seven. Um, the meeting before that, I believe, is the same case. So. Um, this is a quirk of tonight, and that's simply why I'm announcing it now at the beginning of the meeting as opposed to later on. And you don't have to ask for the continuation at the beginning of the discussion period for your application. You can wait till you've gotten a sense of where things might be at and then ask to be continued. Meredith, so, so in other words, um, um, an applicant could present their evidence to the people who are here today and then conclude that they would like it continued to a later hearing yes. when there are more people. Right. Correct. At that point, you'd have people who are not quite as, who would receive a recap of the information, though not the same. They would oh, probably watch the video. They, yeah, they'd have the option to watch the video yeah. and or read the minutes. Okay, so that's how the, the additional members would be prepared if you were to continue to another night, is they would, they would get up to speed by watching the video, reading the minutes. And that's how you would be assured that the evidence you present is received. Mm -hmm. If you've already presented it. So basically, if you've any, already presented it, any time yes. prior to us closing the record and taking it under advisement or a, a, to a vote, you can ask to have this continued to um, another night when a larger contingency of the board is going to be present. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? Great. All right. The first item of business, apart from that, is the approval of the September 16th, 2019 minutes. Uh, myself, Kate, Ryan, Rob were in attendance. That gives us uh, four. Do I have a motion to approve or do I have any corrections? I will make a motion to approve the minutes from September 16th as drafted. Okay, motion by Ryan. Do I have a second? I second the motion. Second by Rob. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor who are eligible to vote for the September 16th minutes, please raise your right hand. We have approved minutes. Excellent. First item of business is 242 Elm Street. Uh, this is Matt and Olga Benoit. If you'll step forward and introduce yourself. I'm Matt Benoit. Okay. Is Live and own at 242 Elm Street. Is anyone here to comment upon the 242 Elm Street application? Okay. Um, um, I just want to note that this afternoon I got some comments from um, a neighbor who owns 7 Winter Street, so behind 242 Elm. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to pass these around and I'll give you one minute in just a minute. Sorry, hold on. Here's two more. 
Um, and give me a minute. I'm gonna pass them around and then I'll explain. Okay. Um, so just generally the um, neighbor at 7 Winter Street is in favor of the project. Um, his main item of concern or item of note really is um, that his parking lot is behind and lower than the back of 240 Elm Street. And so there's some you know, concerns about making sure that we think about where snow is being stored and where that water might run off to. Um, but other than that, just generally in favor of the project. Okay. Mr. Bernoulli, if yes. you raise your right hand, I'll put you under oath. Do you yep. solemnly swear or affirm that the evidence and testimony you're about to give for the matter under consideration shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under pains and penalties of perjury? Yes. Very good. Um, so if you'd like to walk us through what you're proposing, yes. um, my understanding is this, you know, we're looking at this conditional use for minor site plan and demolition of historic structure. So yeah. why don't you describe to us what you're proposing? Uh, it's a four unit apartment building now and there is space in the back that's unfinished and I'm hoping to turn that into a fifth unit. Um, there's, according to the historian, it's not necessarily a demolition, more of a repair. Um, the wall, it's a wall of doors. Um, basically just holding on for its dear life. So we propose to finish that space, rebuild that wall, add a new foundation in the back. Okay. And so this is in the back of the main building. Yes. And um, if I think of Elm Street as running north and south, okay. what side of the building is this the area would, that you're going to be um, north renovating? South, it would be north towards Montpelier. No, north towards okay. Middlesex. Uh, North North goes to Middlesex, yeah, south, yeah. south points towards Middlesex. So be what, west, east, east of the building, the rear. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This, is on kind of weird, this is on a weird part of Elm Street. So yeah. north is actually pointing towards north is pointing towards so the front, one of the front corners of the building. Okay. Well, I'm I'm just roughly is this. Yeah. So be in the easternly. Just for the record, if you into could the meadows. Right into the meadows. Yeah. Okay. So the perpendicular yeah, away from Elm Street. Right. Mm -hmm. So towards the back of the building, yeah. um, facing towards the meadow. Yes. Okay. Um, and could you describe exactly what what the face the facade of the building looks like right now, as opposed to what it's going to look like after the renovation? The facade is in the back or the front? No, just the the actual area you're going to be working on. The actual area I'm going to be working on shouldn't change much at all. Uh, okay. The back wall consists of doors that will be rebuilt with you know, traditional siding. Um, the sides of the building in that area have metal uh, siding on it now. I'll probably use a, a vinyl siding of similar. So, so this is the rear of the building. That's the building, yeah. And that's what you, that's the area you're going to be renovating. That's the back wall, lower section that's going to come off okay. and be rebuilt. Okay. The that apartment goes into the building quite a ways. Right. Yeah. So and everything in the triangle is remaining. Yes. Yep. But the doors will come off, and it will essentially be uh, some more clabbered. Yes. Continuing down. Yes. Uh, doors and windows. Uh, no, it's just going to be storage area back there. So. Okay. Um, two doors added on to the easterly side, I guess, northeasterly side for entrance. Right. I, I see that there's an apartment five entrance door that yes. you want to put um, what looks like it's the side facing towards Montpelier. Right. Replacing a window with the door. Yes. I do have some modifications to the site plan. I don't know if those ever made it. Uh, uh, no. The proposed conditions now, I think that you have show a cantilevered back wall. Mm -hmm. uh, neither my builder nor my foundation repair guy like the idea, so we're just going to rebuild it right where it is. I do have some more drawings if you'd like to see them. 
Yeah, I, we need at least that? one for the record. Sure. I don't know, we can pass them. If you have, do you have multiples or just? Okay. Great. So right now, the back of the this back wall, does it sit on a foundation? It used to be a, I, I believe there's stone there. Right now it's a disintegrating timber. Okay, so the sills are actually in the In the, the ground, earth. yeah. And what's left of them? You said it's deteriorating, kind of falling off. Yeah, yeah, they actually, actually the upper triangle is not connected to the lower section anymore. The lower section is sunk enough so it's not connected okay so this is more than just a the, there's an actual gap here between that right right the second floor and the and the doors right in the frame right um, apart from the the so you're proposing put in a foundation below yeah uh, obviously repairing any rotted sills or, yeah. or wood um, changing the facade anything yeah. else that you're changing to this uh, we're going to install a dormer on the northeasterly side okay. on the second floor. Similar to the existing dormer? Um, of similar style, but much longer. It'll be 14 right. feet, yeah. It'll, it'll be an actual. Right. Um, right. With windows. It'll replace the existing dormer with. Right. One. That one yeah. small one, right? We're going to start there and work from there. Okay. Um, if the, this was, and this is in part the analysis that we have to do, mm -hmm. um, let me start with the beginning. The, the, the front of the building with the, the large columns, mm -hmm. that will not be affected no. by this. No. Um, will any of the changes that you're proposing be visible from Elm Street? No. Okay. Um, you're proposing that when this is done, the back will still be a storage area. Is that what it's serving as right now? Uh, it is storage area now. The whole area is, was my storage, yeah. Is, I mean, I'm trying to understand, in part, mm -hmm. we need to know about the historic significance of this sure. property. This looks like it was like a horse barn. I think so. It had three big doors on the back. It was you know, big enough to put something okay. good size in there. And then the historian that came by said that there used to be an addition on beyond where the building is now. He could tell. Um, okay, so this wasn't actually the back, the actual back of the building. At some point, according to him, he can tell by looking at it that there used to be something else. Okay. Uh, he wrote a letter. Right. I think that's in from Eric Gilbertson. It's the next to the last page in the application packet. Right. And as we dug into the floor a little bit to look at the foundation, we could see that even this back section that I'm proposing fixing was an addition at some point. Back house, so back house, back exactly. Back yeah. House. Yeah. yeah. I assume it was only this front square that was the original house, yeah. and I think. Just to be clear, uh, so interesting. Uh, Eric Gilbertson wrote that letter as an individual rather than as representative of either group. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he, he noted in here who he is, but this is just yeah. his individual going and, and checking out the site. Yes. And it's his opinion that the work meets the Secretary of Interior standards for preservation projects um, and essentially um, you know, picking probably the least visible portion of the house, um, keeping the structural integrity of the building. Mm -hmm. um, just so I understand, if you did nothing, what would happen to the back of the building? I'd give it a couple of years before that wall starts to, I mean, I shored it up so it's holding there, but right. uh, that upper section is really bowing quite a bit. Okay. There probably is some pictures of, in my packet of pictures there. That, and so this project is attempting to keep the, 
infrastructure of the building and the it's half necessary half right. wanting to finish the other rooms that are there and okay make it usable um and if you didn't renovate it what did what economic value could you get out of this back area or what value are you getting out of it now nothing just my personal storage right now i wouldn't trust to have anybody or anything up there okay and it's not sheetrocked so it's not fire no. rated or anything no okay. mostly wood or mostly logs that you can see okay does anybody have any other questions on some of the historic preservation issues or do we feel comfortable i know i really appreciate the letter from eric gilbertson yeah um, me too it was nice it's nice helpful. talking to him he's yeah yeah nice guy. Not, not that there's really precedent that too, too, too much, but um, in our staff report, it was noted that just down the street, there's a very similar sort of building yeah, um, with a similar addition. Yeah, You've yeah. probably seen it. Yeah. Um, that I think helps maximize the uses of these historic right. buildings and the lots on right. which they sit in an area of town where we do want to see more, yeah, yeah. more residential yeah, development. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was his space existing as well? Did he? that he finished up over there it was sort of it was the same, same thing, thing where it was yeah, it yeah. was doors off the back right. maybe used to be used for horses right and was no foundation yeah, following yeah. it it was yeah, almost yeah. the exact same yeah. thing yeah. yeah okay um so if we have no other questions about the um and i guess i would concur with with Eric's determine, you know, Eric's opinion that this seems much less about a demolition. We've had applications where people have wanted to tear off the back of buildings, yeah. or um, you know, which are allowed under certain conditions. This is much more about a renovation and rehabilitation of right. a failing portion of a historic property. Right. Mm -hmm. um, of you know, as has been denoted by your expert, of the lesser contributing quality than the remainder of the building right um, definitely so the other portion of your application I believe deals with the uh, change in parking that you're proposing if you could just outline briefly what you're proposing to do yeah I just gave Mer Meredith a picture uh, so on the back of that wall there is a sloped uh, sloped earth up into the bottom of the doors mm -hmm. um, with the new wall we're gonna get rid of that slope to make it driveway and add another spot in the back next to the existing three spots. Okay. And where would snow storage be located? Snow uh, storage oh. is just beyond that parking area. Okay, so so on that lawn right, right there? Yep. Um, let me see if we get an aerial shot just so we know. Um, how long have you owned the building? Five years. Okay. And have you always had snow storage in that area? Yep. Okay. And have you ever had to truck it off up site? No. Nope. Okay. It's a pretty so big area over there. Sufficient for yeah, the, yeah. the entire yeah. season? Yeah. I've never filled up more than half of it, even last year. Uh, so, Dan, if you go to yep. page 10 of the staff report, where it's measuring out the parking area. Um, now, unfortunately, the parcel lines here are from the tax assessor's map, so they right. aren't really accurate. The The parcel line really goes, like, from the back side of the garage and across. Right. So that the, you know, the the Winter Street neighbor that we heard from is not, it is actually parking their vehicles on their own parcel, not on right. the Elm Street right. parcel. Right. At least not the hoods of them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so... And so just in front of those vehicles, that grassy area, yes. that's the snow storage area. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then how, one thing also about the dimensions, do we have any updated? Yeah, yeah. that updated okay. one gives 36. us, there and we go. the really important one is the garage. Mm -hmm. Yep. The garage gives us because really when you look at these dimensions your total 36 feet proposed only gives us four parking spaces wide but the garage contains an additional is that five bays in that garage yep. and each of those bays is you know seven and a half to nine feet wide and 19 and oh wait 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 19 foot four and a half maybe i'm reading this wrong it, oh nine feet seven and a half inches wide and 19 feet Four and a half inches deep so we've already got all five parking spaces in the garage okay so they they totally meet the minimum parking standards and they don't go over 
Okay. They have at least nine. Do I need that fourth spot? Um, you don't need that fourth Literally, spot. Yeah. You you need a minimum of five parking spaces. Oh. You already have that. Yeah, so yeah. if you don't want to make that okay. a parking space, yeah. okay. you don't have to. Okay. And you have really two options about that at this point. Mm -hmm. One is to just go forward to see if you can get permission for that fourth spot. Mm -hmm. Um, in which case you're under no obligation to build it, or right. you can oh, say, yeah. there's it's no way in hell happen. I'm ever going to build it, right. so I might as well withdraw it. Yeah. Um, no, we'll plan yeah. on going forward with it for now. Um, I think that makes a certain amount of sense only because I'm looking at uh, page 13 of the staff report, which shows an aerial photograph, which looks like the three cars that are parking there are a little tight. Uh, we um, have plenty of room. I mean, okay. My wife drives a minivan. I have my truck and it, it may be the shadow then yeah um, there's plenty of room to open a door and not hit another car certainly having that floor space will right lighten out yeah yeah um, okay so mr. chair could, could someone ex explain to me again where the snow storage will be is it intended to be at the on the grassy part in front of those four parking spaces? Yes. So you move the cars and they plow right. snow into pile yeah. over here. In the winter, most of the cars are in the garage. Uh, we well. don't have enough now, so. <laughs> I would be too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so that's where the snow goes. Yeah. All right. Is there any other um, changes being proposed? Nope. Uh, so one question that we do have to ask about landscaping and screening, are you proposing any new landscaping changes or screening? No. Okay. Um, and I'll no note that there's already parking uh, in, this, in this area, and it looks from this photograph as if there's already sort of screening existing between your, um, your lot and what looks like a house that sits back off of Elm Street, yeah. just to the the south, if you will, closer yeah. to Montpelier, yeah. that, you know, might require s screening if, if that screening didn't exist. Right. Um, right. But given that, in fact, the fourth spot looks as if it's going to park in front of a tree and shrub area already, mm -hmm. so that will be sufficient screening um, to block the neighbor's view or yeah. not to shine headlights right into their right. dining room right. at right. dinner time. Yeah. So, what's the, uh, just, yeah, uh, well, um, and then the fourth, the final staff comment is about traffic. You're proposing just one additional unit. Right. Um, so there'll be five. Um, I don't think that really requires any particular traffic analysis. No. Unlikely. I mean, the driveway seems sufficiently wide. Mm -hmm. but um, okay, so how does the board wish to proceed? We've got conditional use. I have one yes. more question. Oh, yes. I, we talked a little bit about snow storage, and yes. I just want to acknowledge the concern submitted by the Winter Street neighbor, J.C. Earl, about mm -hmm. there being a little bit of a downslope from your property. At today. some point, somebody brought in fill on my lot and leveled it. Shoot. So there's drop-offs all the way around, yeah. for the most part, uh, yeah. at least the back half. Yeah. Um, I know what... This, I don't, I've never met the gentleman, but I know what he's talking about. Yeah, um, yeah. Even today, his parking lot's full of water. Uh, it yeah. just doesn't drain anywhere from there. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure that's within our power to ask you to regrade your yeah, grassy area, if but it's it seems like a done. great conversation starter. Right, right. Maybe I'm certainly not making any changes that will make it worse. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, if, there, if there's anything that can be done to improve or compromise, this uh, sure. might be a good chance to meet. Sure. Right. I think honestly, the most of the, the majority of that snowbank goes, continues further, and there's a gully in between uh, oh, okay. the Winter Street neighbors yeah. and myself. Yeah, so. uh, his lot is behind my garage. Mm -hmm. I don't think much water goes mm -hmm. over there because I have. There used to be trees along the garage, and so there's a pretty big mound. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. It may eventually end up there, but it doesn't directly flow mm -hmm. down that way. Yeah, I, I don't see this as a significant modification of the existing right. um, snow storage. No, I agree. But I appreciate that uh, acknowledgement of Mr. Earl's concerns. So, conditional use? 
Yes. All right. <clears throat> just. Meredith, just remind me, we're looking at the conditional use simply because... Because it's going to five units, and five okay. units is a conditional okay. use in this particular district. So as far as the conditional use application, uh, our review is really about the fifth unit, whether adding a fifth apartment unit. And let me just ask, are there a number of apartments uh, along Elm Street in this neighborhood? Um, on the northeasterly side, closer to Montpelier, it's all condo duplexes. Okay. Uh, and then on the other side of the driveway is a four unit. It's it is all apartments. Apartments are multi me. multi family. Yeah, yeah, all around us definitely. Okay. So conditional use as says the applicant shall demonstrate that the proposed development shall not cause a disproportionate or unreasonable burden on the city's ability to provide community facilities, utilities, including one local schools, two police, fire, protection, ambulance service, three street infrastructure and maintenance, four parks and recreation facilities, five water supply, sewage, disposal and stormwater and infrastructure. So none of those things seem to be triggered by this application. Um, this is consistent with the character of the neighborhood. Um, this is this Elm Street in particular seems to have a number of multifamily. This is already a multifamily. We're simply adding one more unit to it. Um, and this is not likely to change the um, noise, sounds, smell. Um, it's not likely to create any unusual odors um, for, the, for the neighborhood. Uh, so consistent with that, um, what's the, does the board have any other questions on conditional use? No. Okay. Why don't we just, um, I think this application is straightforward enough. We can simply vote it all at the end in one motion. That's okay by me. Okay. So, um, and I think as far as the historic, uh, well, let's see, the minor site plan, again, is, is I think we've hit all of the points on, mm -hmm. On those, um, and then the demolition of historic structure. Are we in agreement that this is really not a demolition of a historic structure, but really a repair and renovation to an existing historical structure that will cause some minor demolition, but appears to be consistent with what's necessary to save the structure? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. So, given that, then I think we're ready for a motion on this application. So I'll go ahead and make the uh, motion to approve the request for conditional use um, approval and minor site plan. Um, and I guess the, I want some guidance with, we're going to uh, vary from the warning to be uh, site plan and, and rehabilitation. Right. Uh, for 242 Elm Street. Okay. A motion by Kevin. Do I have a second? I second that motion. I have a second by Rob. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. All right. You have uh, our vote of approval. What will happen next is we'll draft a decision indicating the findings of the board. Um, that will be issued. Then there's a 30-day appeal window that comes out of that. Um, and then the permit becomes final, okay. if, if not appealed. Um, but Meredith can certainly guide you on the next steps. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck with that. Thank you, Matt. Okay. Next application is 5 West Street. Jonathan Hertz. Oh. There's actually a change in ownership oh. in the last few days. Sean and Jenny Sheehan. Yes. Okay. So the applicants are now also the owners. Excellent. Okay. Uh, if you'll state your name for the record, and then we'll swear you in, um, and then I'll let you basically identify the project. And my understanding from Meredith is there may be some changes that you wish to uh, uh, discuss. Okay. Jenny Sheehan. And Sean Sheehan. Okay. If you both raise your right hand. Is anyone else here to be heard on this? Okay. 
Uh, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the evidence and testimony you're about to give for the matter under consideration shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under pains and penalties of perjury? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. All right. So if you'll introduce uh, the application and any changes that you wish to put forward. Do you want to go ahead? Yeah, me too. Okay. And it's the full. The full application, or this part, right. portion? Yeah, this, is, is, okay. this covers everything. Okay. All right, so um, so for the application, we're, uh, and it has, I think, three three parts of of what we're in. One, the uh, the house is in uh, bad need of a new new roof, and uh, and the paint is peeling and chipping on the on the trim, and the um, and the and the shakes are are uh, cracked and curling in some. So one one piece of, of the application is to to deal deal with those those items to put a new new roof on. Um, and and to paint the paint the trim and um, and uh, and patch the the uh, the cedar cedar shakes and and stain stain those. The uh, the second piece relates to to turning uh, the the garage and what they call the summer house or workshop above the the garage into an accessory dwelling unit. Um, so for that uh, for that portion, um, we'd be looking at. At, uh, at running running water, it already has insulation and, and electricity running running to it, and um, and and then because of the uh, the parking space uh, requirements, we would be having the parking space in the garage go with the accessory dwelling unit, and we would be adding a uh, a driveway for our ourselves on um, on the West Street side. Now the amendment that was was referred to was we we we, we had been looking at. Uh, Getting a, a waiver to be on the, the left side of the of the walkway, close closer to uh, in the in the lawn there, um, closer to to First Street. Um, but upon I think having other conversations and looking and finding out that there isn't the need for um, for large large offsets, that we think it would actually uh, look better and work better to be on the the right side of the um, of the property, um, close to the property line there where the raspberry bushes are um, now. Okay. Can I just add a little procedural yes. note here? I, would, I was just going to ask you to do so. <laughs> so the only reason that this application is before the Development Review Board is because of the original driveway location proposal, which was 40 feet from the intersection of First Avenue and West Street. Um, and from, from that location, the closest driveway is over 100 feet away in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. um, in moving, proposing to move the driveway to the other side of the house, closer to the um, shared boundary, further up, there's absolutely no reason for this application to be for the DRB. Um, and so I, I didn't find out about this until the previous design review committee meeting where they went for sure. approval of all the paint colors and everything. So we weren't able to do a written withdrawal or anything from the DRB. But if they're amending this at this point, I think there might be, I, I haven't dealt with this before, but there might be the option, I'm not sure, for the DRB to just shoot it back administratively and have it be administratively approved if that's what the applicants want, I think. So you're saying that the location of the new proposed driveway, which you're saying is to the right of the walkway if you're facing mm -hmm. the house, that new driveway is sufficient distance from the next driveway up yes. away from what away yep. from that first. sufficient from that driveway um, you know I mean that's based on relatively rough calculations was but it, was the driveway or was it the intersection it, it, well it, wait so so that? originally the problem was distance to the driveway or right. to, distance to the intersection it has to be 50 feet from the intersection so if you move it to the other side of the house it is more than 50 feet from the intersection and I had checked previously that the current location was m well more than, I mean, way more than 100 feet from the next closest driveway. And the minimum distance to driveways, <coughs> I put that in here somewhere. Um, on. Is it 100 feet? No. 30 feet between driveways. Yeah, 30 feet. For MUR, the requirement access points are a minimum of 50 feet to any intersection and 30 feet between driveways. Yeah, and it's over, from its current location, it's over 100 feet to the closest driveway. So moving it even 50 feet is going to be still well within the bounds of 
the requirements. Mm -hmm. So there's no need for it to be before the Development Review Board anymore. So I'm going to just restate that. All the things that we are that are in this application, if the application had been brought to you a week ago, you would have said, oh, these, are all, these can all be administratively approved and permitted. Correct. And so we're here just because it was warned. I, I think we should okay. do the right thing. And, yeah. And Kick it back. Kick it back. Um, unless, yeah. they, unless there's any, any. If, and if that's the well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, let me let me ask this question. This went before the DRC for the design review components. Correct. Okay. And what was the outcome of that? Oh, the, they were quite happy with it, and they were also fine with moving the driveway. Um, then I I don't see any reason for us, and we'll give you an opportunity to weigh in on this as well for us to necessarily mull this over uh, through a deliberative process simply because the bylaws allow for this kind of application to be done administratively. Um, you know, it's a bit of six of one, half a dozen of another, but the one benefit is that I think the administrative approval moves us a bit faster. Um, it might be significantly faster. <laughs> <laughs> yes, depending on how the, the workflows go. Um, and we're happy to go that Okay. Route. I mean, I, I don't think we need to, as a deliberative body, you know, subject you to that, that process where the bylaws don't require it. Now that you've made that alteration, we're happy to send you right back to the administrative sure. yeah. approval. And I don't know that we have any rules around this one way or another, but I would just say that if this had been warned and someone took interest in it and wanted to come talk about it in this public setting, they could have done so. So that opportunity has been provided mm -hmm. um, through appropriate notice. And you've told us and added to the record why you've changed the driveway, and we've talked about how it meets the requirements. So I think I think we've kind of covered our bases in terms of, of what we need to do. So I'll accept a motion to remand this to the zoning administrator for administrative review and approval based on the uh, Montpelier bylaws. So moved. Motion by Kate. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ryan. All those in any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. All right. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. Good luck with that. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Beautiful house. Yeah. Thank you. Gorgeous house. Yeah. Administrative approval, that's like just the staff report is basically the administrative report. We yeah. just have to clean it up a little bit. You, you never say no to administrative approval. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's have to run it by Department of Public Works again, but there's no sight line issues there. Okay. So uh, the next applicant is 60 Main Street, the 60 Main Street Associates LLC. Welcome. Um, I will note for the record that I am recusing myself for this application from any vote. However, um, as consistent with board precedent, I'm happy to continue to sit as chair and facilitate the review, understanding that I will not be casting a vote in the decision. Uh, and so that would mean we would have to have a unanimous. You would have to have all four. Vote unanimously. Or who's better? Seek the other two. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and I'll give the applicants if the applicants have any objection to me sitting as as chair to facilitate the hearing. Um, I'm happy to recuse myself fully and step down. Okay. Um, does anybody need extra staff reports? I do have a couple. Okay. Thank you. If you have one, I'll. Yeah. This is just the staff report, not the full packet. If you need the full packet, let me know. I'll be speaking about this one as well. Hopefully, you can share the photograph slash rendering over this one. That's a normally good vision here. Oh, you just have one? I just have one. Okay. So. Okay, uh, so if you would introduce yourselves and then I will put everyone under oath. I'm Talia Stonaroff. Bill Kaplan. Jacqueline Rieke. Okay, if you all raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the evidence and testimony you're about to give for the matter under consideration shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? I do. I do. I do. Very good. Um, 
rather than have you start off, I actually want to have Meredith uh, give us a sort of procedural overview because this is in a slightly different posture than the prior two applications. Um, okay, so um, this application is for a sign at 60 Main Street. Um, and the reason it's here is because it went through the design review process um, and the design review committee's recommendations for the sign which was proposed at with letters of 24 inches high was to reduce those letters to 18 inches high. Um, the applicants don't agree with that recommendation and so it has been referred here um, per do, 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 uh, section 4301 F. Um, now that language in 4301 F describes it as an appeal, but there's actually no statutory basis for it to be dealt with under uh, true appeal procedures. Um, and so we're treating it as just a referral to the DRB because there's been no administrative action, there's been no permit issued. Um, and so this is, you know, just like referring other problems that we've referred to you when we, as administrative officers or, you know, certain administrators can't make the decision. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they had the option of having me issue the permit and then appealing the permit, but this seemed like the more straightforward. So this is, this is effectively a de novo yeah. uh, Sorry. review. Yeah, sorry. Yes. So this is effectively a de novo review, but, you know, because they're appealing that specific recommendation, my my suggestion would be to just be reviewing that front sign um, and not the other signs on the alleyway, but I've included the full application package in here. Um, and I've, you know, because part of the application is confirming that it meets all of the size requirements, there's some discussion in the staff report about the size of all the signs. So um, the side, the ones on the side, they're not being appealed. The, right, and the design review committee was fine with the ones on the side as but, they were but proposed. Since, but since we're uh, reviewing under a de novo stance, yeah, it's it's a little it's a little funky as to because because that well we can certainly you can, can do it either adopt. way. We can we yeah. we can I mean this is kind of like the old system that yep. we had where the DRC would uh, make recommendations <coughs> to us that we were not bound to mm -hmm. adhere to. However, we gave them um, a high level of deference right. um, because of the area of expertise. But you know, at the same time, we weren't bound by yeah. them if we felt that the reasoning for their decision was not consistent with the bylaws or that there were certain facts either introduced at this hearing or the prior hearing that were inconsistent with the decision. Yeah. So and either way, it means the design review committee is an advisory committee. Huh. They don't actually make the ultimate decision. Um, I think in, in this, this instance. right? It, well, in any instance, even when they make recommendations on an ad administrative permit, ultimately it comes to the zoning administrator, and even the zoning administrator in some instances has the authority to say, oh, wait, the DRC clearly made a mistake somewhere or failed to get some information. I've, you know, it's less, much less likely to happen. So in, um, this, in this instance, uh, the 24 versus 18 inch uh, was based upon what specific criteria? So the 24 versus 14 inch is based on my understanding at the hearing and based on really what you need to go by is the recommendation form that they filled out. Um, you can see where they had, so this is a Meredith, you know, few, would, little would you in. mind, I'm so sorry to interrupt, would you mind just adding that in the first application, which was completely approved, they did approve a 24 inch, 24 inch letters yeah, as well. Yeah, and that's, thank you. This was about, I was asked to talk about the procedural, yes. not necessarily the full permit history right yes. here. It is in the staff report, yes. and that is a, that is important. Thank you. Um, but so um, here, it seems to be that the 18 inch versus 24 inch sign height difference came into play for um, whether or not the sign. 
dealt with the appropriate historic style, um, harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district, um, prevention of the use of incompatible designs, conformance with cityscape design recommendations, potentially, I'm not sure about that one, because cityscape doesn't actually have anything about size. I have that in, I've included those cityscape um, recommendations in your packet. And then compatibility with subject property and adjacent properties. Those are, the, because that's the only thing where, you know, that, that, was, that was one of the big issues discussed. There were, you know, one of the problems is that you cannot make sign determinations based on content. This is a constitutional law issue. Um, was that an issue? There, there was a lot of discussion about the content. Oh, yeah. yes. How much, you know, there are lots of times where the design review committee will give recommendations on things where in the meeting and but it is outside of the bounds of what could be a condition on the permit so if i were to issue a permit and they had said something on here specifically about content that would not have gone as a condition on the permit because they put on the actual recommendation form which ultimately is that the record of their decision um this note about the different size issues that's not something i have authority to make a judgment call on unfortunately um, you know they, they did a different as outlined in the history a different grouping of design review committee members previously approved a sign with 24 inch letters uh, I'd like to clarify that point because I, I read that and I kind of looked back and forth at who approved the first one and who approved the second mm -hmm. and what was different between the two. And it is true that in the first and second applications there were 24 inch letters. Mm -hmm. um, but in the first application it was 20 feet worth of 24 inch letters. In the second application it's 39 feet yes. worth of 24 inch letters. So I, I just want to be careful not to yep. talk about those like they're the same. Yep, nope, they're not the same. There's okay. there's a uh, much but. different, and, and, and it adds up to a, a much different total square footage of the signage. Now, both of those signs meet the, you know, are compliant with the maximum sign area requirements in the standard just basic sign regulations. Mm -hmm. It all comes down to the design review criteria, which aren't something I can weigh in on. If I feel like somebody has missed putting a per pertinent piece of information for it, an administrative application that goes along with design review, I can ask for that information to buffer something. But if it's a judgment call on something like this, where I don't have a yes, no answer on something, I can't really make that. So that's why it's here. So if I understand correctly, um, there's nothing about either the, per the, the sign that the applicants seek now mm -hmm. or what was approved that triggers any type of um, overall size limitation. No, they're, um, all, they're all within the overall size limitation bounds. And? They all meet all of those basic <laughs> sign requirements. And if, if I understand correctly, the uh, although not put into the design review decision, the discussion that was around whether 24 or 18 inch was really about sort of consistently, consistency with the cityscape? Um, it was consistency with the rest of the historic downtown district. Okay. Um, th that was a major part of it. Um, and, you know, it's, you know, there are other signs in the district that are this size, and there was discussion of that at the hearing about different signs that were this big. Um, and there were committee members who said yes, those signs were are are that have letters that height, but that doesn't mean that's good design. Mm -hmm. So, but it's still it's you know you're asking me to sort of go outside of what's on the recommendation. Right. Form. No, no. I just wanted to understand what was animating the conversation without necessarily because I mean obviously. There was a lot animating the conversation. There was a lot of content, and then there was also okay. size. Both of those things came up, Oof. you know, and we can't deal with content. Right. And ultimately, I mean, 
you know, I'll, I'll note simply that the design review recommendation form really limits itself strictly to a limited number of content, um, limited number of comments, and does not, you know, articulate any either options, adjustments, recommendations. Um, and and just to be clear, the 18-inch was a recommendation. That was not a proposal by the applicant. Correct. It was. It, there was discussion. This is something that is a bit of a procedural oddity. There was a lot of discussion by a couple of DRC members saying, oh, we'd be okay with 18 inches. And so even though applicants weren't proposing 18 inches, to try and find some way to see if that was a possibility, especially because we didn't have all of the applicant's representatives at the table by the time we got to this level of, of discussion. We um, pardon? We, we had directive. We were clear. Right, right. Well, yes. Yeah. It was looking, it, it didn't look like 24 inches was going to pass at all. So there was a question of would they approve it 18 I inches. Think, so. so that vote was done. That wasn't necessarily something that the applicants requested. Can I just make a suggestion that so I think what the DRC is an advisory board Correct. to us. They make recommendations. We're at the stage where those recommendations have not been accepted. I think right. it's important that we have the design review criteria. That is what we are applying. And at this stage, the most important thing is for this board to apply those review criteria to the proposal that is going to be put in front of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think it makes sense to move to that proposal and let the applicants tell us Thank what you. they would like to have us review. And then we as a board will review them pursuant mm -hmm. to these design criteria. And I think it's important to note that, yes, there's size limitations. That's like the maximum as far as the size. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about design. Um, and you know, there's design can mean different things to different people. Sure. Um, so there's a lot of leeway there, but I'd appreciate just taking, like, hearing what the proposal thank is. Thank you. And that. I think before yeah, we so I, I want to, I want to thank you for the procedural overview yes. because that is a good grounding. Also yeah, we need that. that. We yep. need yep. that, and also the reminder that now we're starting de novo anew. Okay. Before we do the de novo, I uh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I, I think that there's, uh, there's one piece. Make there sure that the microphone's pointed at you. This is a little um, confusing because, you know, leaving that. Uh, meeting there was no um, there was no decision that was there were there were 16 votes taken and two of them um, were split two to two otherwise all these votes were in favor and had the three you know necessary votes to move forward so it was interesting I mean it was it was a little confusing but thank you for straightening that out and, and I think that it was just important to note that there was nothing out of hand rejected. There were no issues that the board was definitive on that wasn't positive. They were positive on a number of the votes. They were unanimous. There were, there were two where um, they were split. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, that's all I want to yeah. add to that. I, I just okay. think that was. I, I would like to understand that a little bit more. At the first set of, at the first go round, talking about the proposed sign, there were three people present. That's where you had a sign that was 20. Oh. There, yeah, I wasn't referring to that first one. Okay, you I was only three referring people. to the one w that we were um, going after. The first okay. one where they approved. It was four, but we got like three to one. So that's and the three that you were referring to. Okay. All right. Just didn't want to conflate the two proposals. We're talking about that one. All right. Okay. So um, I think taking up Ryan's uh, comment, um, <clears throat> the floor is yours. Tell us about uh, the sign. Great. So I'm Talia Stonaroff. I'm an architect here in Montpelier. And I first want to thank you all for being here. And thank you, Meredith and Audra, for writing up this incredibly uh, comprehensive report. It's really impressive to read. So I'm hoping to, I think you all have this document, and I'm hoping just to walk through this and explain our process of, of really understanding and addressing the sign. So you can see on the first page, uh, the previous sign of one more time uh, had 31 inch wood letters, and that was approved. On the next page and on the additional image that I gave to you, you can see our proposed sign with 24-inch aluminum letters. 
We then just show how there are signs greater than 24 inches consistently in town currently. So on Walgreens, some of the letters are 31 inches on Cool Jewels, and we're not commenting on the design. We're just strictly showing the uh, heights of the letters. They are also 24 inches. The new beautiful Montpelier sign that was just installed, uh, I think just last week, uh, is 28, a little over 28 inches high. So we took the DRC's comments seriously, and we wanted to test this and say, well, okay, so what does 18 inch look like on this signboard, which is very large, I believe it's 54 inches high, the existing signboard at the new Rabble Browser, and what does 24 inches look like? So we did mock-up letters, and we pasted them up there, and we took photographs, and we actually talked to people walking by and got their opinion. And everyone agreed that the 18-inch letters on this very large signboard, which is existing, just ended up looking kind of diminutive and really small and almost silly. So as Meredith noted, the sign we're proposing is absolutely within and in fact quite under the regulations by the planning board in terms of square footage. Um, also noted the initial sign that had different content was approved with some 24-inch letters. We also decided to change the font. There was uh, talk about the font with the initial proposal, um, and the letters were thicker and a little more ragged. So we changed the font to be calmer and cleaner, more of a mid-century um, historic font. On the next page, you can see the previous sign that was approved with the 24-inch letters that said Rabble Rouser, which the committee really, I think, wanted to have the name of the company up there. And um, as Meredith noted, there was a lot of comments about having what, what was contained within the store that, that they weren't as positive about that. But that's not what we're talking about. Um, on the next page, you can see those mock-up letters. So you see the 24-inch letter and then the 18-inch letter. And you can see how much extra space is left when you have that 18-inch letter. And then finally, you can see the sign again as we are proposing it with the 24-inch letters on that last page and on the rendering, which is actually a photograph just with the sign rendered that we presented. Uh, we looked over the recommendations that Meredith and Audra kindly put into this document uh, and looked up on the website recommended, how do you choose the correct letter height? So if you look at the additional uh, map here, which is taken from the Montpelier Interactive website, um, we took some dimensions. So we took a dimension from State and Main, which is our key intersection in this town. And that is about 278 feet and three inches from there. And at that distance to really maximize the benefit per the recommendation of the website, it's clearly 24 inches. In fact, that's greater than um, the 240 feet that's recommended in that document that you provided, Meredith. Mm -hmm. From other areas in the town, uh, for instance, at the edge of Skinny Pancake, it's 457 feet. So again, those 24-inch letters would be entirely appropriate at that distance, and the 18 would really not be at the maximum visibility. So we're really thankful that we have the opportunity to present this to you, and we're um, eager to hear your comments. Any questions from the board? Um, you gave us a new picture tonight. Yes. And um, I, I want to try and understand what I might be seeing or feeling differently about this picture compared to maybe this picture. Uh -huh. And um, one of them is daytime, one of them is nighttime. This one is lit, so we've got shadows. Um, we want to understand it. I mean, there's something about I'm, I'm just going to react at the moment, okay? Because design, personal, all that. Um, <laughs> if, you know, there's something soft about this nighttime shot with mm -hmm. the gooseneck lighting, with the, with the um, 
the depth of the letters being featured by that lighting. Sure. Um, and that play like reads differently to me than I forget which of the, the daylight photos looked and felt very different to me. So can you tell me what's happening in my brain when when that happens? <laughs> <laughs> Please, but, but well <laughs> actually, actually I, don't, I don't think you've qualified the expert for that. <laughs> um, yeah, so the larger well, photo. But 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 more like that's when, when people's eyes is. take in light in different ways and they respond to a design, what right. what, what is different between that sort of softer nighttime and the larger one? Because I like one and not the other. Okay. Well, one, the image that I just recently gave you, I actually went and photographed, um, and that is exactly what the building looks like at dusk mm -hmm. with just the sign superimposed on it. Uh, I think this one, you you don't you don't see the shadows as much, which. Mm -hmm. This is a this is a rendering. Mm -hmm. um, you would see the shadows in the daytime because the letters are offset from the building. So unless you know you're getting a direct sun, you're always going to see that depth. Mm -hmm. um, is the, the, no, that's the kind of thing I'm going you, for? When yeah. you look at a building, you, you, there's sheen. There are different things that are happening. You would right. never. This will never happen. You know, this might mm -hmm. happen on the perfect kind of overcast, bright day. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't even think you'd get that because the letters have different texture. There's different things going on. This is generated by a computer, and it's perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, the building will never, and the, and the sign and the, and the conditions will never be perfect. That's why you pick up on the uniformity in it. Okay. I just want to be like. We'll, we'll so, get to that. She likes the, <laughs> so to be clear, on the t on the excuse me, on the type of, of lettering, that this is your current proposal. That's right. Okay, not not what we have in the packet. Or at least it's not same. Well, it's it's, the same. it's, it's the same. really the same. So the original... It's just a... There's... Sorry. No, it's okay. On. I just want... I think this is the point, be clear. I mean, in the original, right, it looks like right. you have a, a font with serifs. Right. Yeah. Um, right. And then the revised proposal, what we were seeing... And what you've handed out tonight, and what just to make sure we're clear, is the sans serifs, uh, the sort of uh, mid-century correct font that you know, from a typographic point of view, has less space because there's not those little feet mm -hmm. on on the letters. Mm -hmm. What serifs? <laughs> Speaking my language. Um, I also note that the calculations, the square footage calculations that were done on the first sign, those, that font was chunkier. Yeah, so yeah. actually, we might, we're at quite a bit less in terms of square footage because yeah. this is a um, more elegant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think you gave me the full dimensions on the new version, did you? Without the serfs? And so less this is in reaction to the Yeah, it's going to be less. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. get that. Mm -hmm. so, less than. Yep, so, less than. <laughs> that's, that's, you're right. That's the most important thing. Meredith, the, the um, DRC was reviewing this font. The DRC was reviewing that font. So this is new to us this evening. Uh, correct. The, the proposal with the different style of font Did is not something font. that the Design Review Committee saw. Okay. Because we heard them, yeah. and we, we did try and respond uh, in full to their comments. We tested it. Mm -hmm. We shifted the font. Yep. No, and this is one reason it took a little longer to get here than it might have otherwise, sure. because I knew they were working to try and redesign it to see if 18 inches would work for them, and it didn't. And so these letters are going to be made out of aluminum? Oh, thank you for asking. So. We're really excited about this fabrication. Um, ben Cheney, who is a local f incredible metal fabricator and designer, uh, is going to be making these. They're aluminum, and they'll all be custom fabricated for us and then um, offset from the building by about, I think, an inch and a half or two inches. So you get that beautiful shadow. Okay. So there's not going to be a great deal of depth in these letters off of the... There's not going to be... I mean, the aluminum will be not that thick. Right. Um, uh, well, I'm, I would contrast it maybe with just for understanding purposes. The Walgreens um, or? Either the Walgreens or even the, the once of one more time sign that was there that was very much a three-dimensional yes. kind of letter. This is going to be sort of a flat letter against the wall. I mean, it will have with some depth. With that offset it's, of the shadow. We live yes. in the th third dimension. Well, in three <laughs> dimensions, but I mean, it's not going to have a, a great deal of depth. There. You don't want to be eight inches on it. 
<laughs> the, the, the letters will probably be quarter inch thick, yeah. but then they'll be this far off the signboard. Okay. So it, it's, a, it's a thin and elegant piece, yeah. but then you'll get that depth of the, the uh, shadow. I will just note, at least as one member, um, I find that the new proposed font makes a big difference. Mm. I, the, the, the first, what you were doing before is very massive. Mm -hmm. And I, it's heavy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think one of the things that, I mean, if uh, how, how have you compared like the overall sort of width? As mm -hmm. Kate, I think mentioned it was you were going from 20 feet of 24 foot letters to now 38 feet or something. 39. 20. But maybe a little less with your new font. Right. And so and I mean, I think you know, hearing some of what the DRC was talking about and they're sort of, um, you know, they were they're happy with the name but they're less happy with this string of the things that you have inside. And obviously we're not gonna, it, if you if your name was Rabble Rouser Coffee Florist, you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> then you, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't say, oh, you can't do that. But I think some of it is, um, you know, you could put up as many words as you want and take the full, you know, amount of space that you have within your, your sign band there. Uh, did you do any analysis of other, how other, the, the sort of linear space that other signs use in the city on Main Street. Oh, that other signs use. Yeah, so I've looked a lot at that. Um, most signs go basically from within, you know, a foot to 18 inches of their party wall, mm -hmm. you know, across. They use mm -hmm. the majority of it. I think that part of what's happening here um, is that this is a very large space. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's why it sat empty for a long time. I think that's why it, 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 it has taken a little while to get this up and going. I, and I think that what when you see this big space, you know, I would hope that someone taking that risk doesn't get penalized and get limited to, you know, kind of compared to a place that has 18 foot frontage mm -hmm. versus a place that has 60 foot frontage. Um, because there's a lot here, there's a lot that it takes to operate the store, and I think that there's a need for clarity of what's going on. So it's not superfluous, this, the, you know, that none of these two things are redundant. They all kind of express what's going on, not to talk about content. But sure, we're talking about content. <laughs> no, but I appreciate that, and I mean, I'm looking at Walgreens. They've utilized, you know, the full Cool Jewels. Has they did it twice. Walgreens had so much space they went yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and I mean, maybe that's aesthetically just like in looking at the previous One More Time sign, which did have the 24 high letters, but didn't utilize the full width of the space. 30, 31. Uh, 31 big. Yeah. Well, um, and they, I mean, just for perspective, what Bill was talking about, and about how signs that have less frontage are still using a large percentage of their sign band. If you just look on page seven of the staff report, I just pulled in some just street views of signs nearby. So Thank you. yes, Yay, these signs yeah. are smaller, but the percentage of sign band for each storefront being used up, it just gives some perspective, right. both with regard to size of letters as well as how much of sign band they're using. Just you know, it, depending on what you're looking at, because you're looking at design. And on on that page, yeah, on that page seven, I, I think that was the question that it came down to for me is, how how much of that band is occupied by the sign, the the lettering of the sign, and how does that compare to the other parts of the area? And that's the sort of compatibility thing. Just one more note on that. Mm -hmm. That first application that was approved, mm -hmm. we were only applying for Rabble Rouser. Mm -hmm. And there would have been a florist mm -hmm. sign also that would have been on the left, but that wasn't part of the application at the time. So uh, if you're looking at the total amount of area used or distance used, in fact, it would have been twice that much because florist would have had a sign also. We just weren't applying for that at the time. Yeah. But since we're looking at it as all one band, yes. I'm sort of looking at page seven here, and we've got one, two, yes. three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And at least three of them, four of them, about half of them, <laughs> um, use really just the center third mm -hmm. of the sign mm -hmm. band. Sure. And I think that is that is sort of what I'm accustomed to seeing, even though there are exceptions. Mm -hmm. I think maybe part of what our brains might be grappling with here is that this would be a very large exception. And so when it comes to compatibility, that's kind of where we have to 
think and contemplate. And I understand everything that you said about a lot going on in there and taking a risk and all that. Well, no, I was going to put it in historic content uh, context because if you look at Obishan as an is an old retailer, mm -hmm. yep. uh, Kinney Drug is an old retailer, mm -hmm. Capital Stationers is an old retailer, and you look at how they have used their sign band mm -hmm. over experience. I think that there's been a lot of research on how best by these you know tenants to as how best to set themselves up for success in that space. So. And I think that these successful retailers have also done that same research. Perhaps, it, it, perhaps, I guess. Well, some of these signs that you're looking at are just vinyl banners. They're not, okay. you know, they're not a, yeah. they're, it's a It's not the material review. I'm talking about so much as the proportions. But it's design, right? I, mean, yes. I don't want to be argumentative, but sure. I'm trying to I'm, understand what the issue we need to address is. Yeah, and I'm, I'm trying to isolate one element of the design, not the material part of the design, which I think is very exciting, um, but the proportionality and, and location of it with respect to the sign band. One thing that occurs to me would be that uh, <coughs> the, the, the proposal uh, presents a uniform retail visual experience. I mean, that is different than what we have downtown. But that doesn't mean it's not the right thing to do. <laughs> no, and it doesn't mean it's inconsistent with, with other things. I right. Mean, and I think that that's, that's how I, 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 yeah, I take your point, but I do I appreciate the fact that, you know, <clears throat> at least half of the examples we have from, from Main Street, they have, uh, you know, fully utilized the, um, the, the, the linear width of their sign band. Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't think, and I, I mean, I think that's a good point too, to think about these individually. Um, you know, if half of this had been rabble rouser and half of it had been a florist, mm -hmm. you know, there's nothing to say the florist couldn't have come in and proposed something like the, capital the language or, or just, or, or um, a design that's very similar to rabble rouser such that it would have a similar effect of having this one massive sort of unified sign Mm. Even though it's four separate individual, you know, if these were four individual businesses and each mm -hmm. just said, I'm just a florist, I just want my sign to say florist and, and, to, and to match. And then the chocolatier comes in next door and says, I really like what the florist did, I want to do something similar. Mm. It would have the same effect as this. I think it's just because it's a big change from what was there previously mm -hmm. and because it is this big unified thing. But um, I, I don't... Uh, I appreciate that, that these really are important and necessary, but sort of separate elements of the use of the space and as such, I think. And maybe that changes things. Well, one thing I will note that this, this, just because when we dealt with this with one more time, this is an unusually large sign band mm -hmm. as opposed to the abutting um, spaces. It has a good I don't want to estimate, but it, it seems like at least two of those sort of uh, horizontal um, clabbered are deeper or, or than the other sign band. I mean, it's it's not insignificant the size, the 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 palette that they're working from. Um, So any other questions that we wish or testimony that we need from uh, the applicant as far as this? Is there anything you wanted to discuss further or describe about this? I think just to add that we all feel really passionately about this city and we're really committed to this city. And it's been thrilling to see this new business come into the space and enliven a space that was vacant for, I believe, over five years and was really a blight on downtown. And we're just really excited about bringing life to the city and making this something that's exciting and you know, continuing all of the energy that Montpelier has. Mm -hmm. Great. I would just add um, that it's true what Bill said just about the size of the space and the risk involved in occupying the space. And um, 
I do think it's a much more elegant sign than our initial proposal. Well, both of them. And we're, we're, we're feeling like this is going to really contribute to the success of our business. Um, and also we've been um, honored to be engaged like in the process with the town and everything and following that process. But it has been um, a lot of w waiting to get ourselves revealed. And so we look forward to moving it. And I think this is the right way to go. I guess I'd just ask a question um, based on your experience as architects and experts in this. Um, you know, what we're really talking about is harmony of the design with properties in the district. Mm -hmm. I think that's really compatibility of the materials, I think, is great. Uh, prevention of incompatible designs, color schemes, or exterior materials, maybe incompatible designs. Um, but what I've heard from the DRC was that they were really concerned with. 24 versus 18 inch letters and I really appreciate this mock-up to show the sign so I guess what I'd like you to address is whether you believe that an 18 inch letter following this same design would be more uh, harmonious with properties in the district more compatible less compatible or um, or neutral well we looked at that digitally and in terms of design first really did not feel like it was nearly as strong, uh, as strong a proposal. I think we've shown that there are many examples of signs in the district that are 24 inches or larger. So yes, there are some that are smaller, but I think you can find both sides of it. So I would say it's absolutely compatible and will help to enliven the city. No, I think that the work you've done is great. So what if a couple, you, couple, three, five years down the road, you know, one of the one of the tenants leaves and all of a sudden you've got a sign there that doesn't match with the new tenant? I can speak to that. Um, so we understand that any sign alterations need to come through um, the city and we're comfortable with that. Um, and three of the four of these offerings do come from Rabble Rouser from one company. The Florist is a separate company that we want to work really hard to retain and to help support. They just had the most successful month of their life in September, so that was really good. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, double their most successful month ever. Yes. Um, and the three offerings, yeah, there's a bit of a risk in terms of um, materials um, replacement I mean, and, that, board, that, and board approach. That's what occurs to me, approach. because you're, you're proposing something that's that's new. Right. And, and that may be good. And we're learning. And, that may be, and our coffee's know. not perfect. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> we're getting there. But you know what I see these three things as, and um, again, I rec you know, in recognizing the, the risk, the liability, the expense that's possible from right. committing to this is that the power of it is that it is the commitment. It is our commitment to the town. And it's saying, first of all, we're a chocolate factory, which I don't anticipate would ever change. But then second of all, we're going to be a coffee house that's available for people. And we're going to be a place where people can have spirits in the evenings. And so basically it's saying, we're here for you in the morning. We're here for you in the evening. And the way that we're here is because we're a chocolate factory. And so those things, although they may change, they're not likely to. And also, I feel that by putting the sign here, it helps them to not change by putting the promise out there um, as a commitment. The one sign that this does remind me of a little bit, and I'll just throw that out there, is um, Necky with the restaurant at the top. Right. That makes a lot of sense. I'm going to leave that risk to the applicants. I think that's true of any business. You might mm -hmm. change the name. You might change your hours. You might change anything about it. So I think we're looking at sort of the massing and the, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to scramble these letters up in my head and pretend they're not really words and just looking at the shape <laughs> on the band. <laughs> thank just you, thank you. <laughs> such a puzzle. And thank you, Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. So, anything yeah. further? Yes. Um, I really appreciate the description. You, you help me understand better what I'm seeing in a photo versus a computer rendering. And we're such visual animals. Mm -hmm. um, it's very hard for me to sit here and say, what would this look like at 18 inches? Or splitting the difference, 21 inches. What does it mean? What does it look like? How does it feel? Because this is what people despise about aesthetics. But it, there, it's a lot about feeling. It's also what people love about aesthetics, because it makes a place a place. Mm -hmm. um, 
So I don't know if it is within this board's interest or power to request something like this in the daytime with 21 or with 18, because I'm having a hard time valuing this versus that. I think this is actually also part of the problem with the, what the DRC did is that our role is not to design, to design or redesign projects. Right. Our right. role is to, to answer the simple question, and it's not a simple question, answer the very difficult question of <laughs> is this design in harmony with the surrounding properties and the feel of downtown? And it is very subjective. It is very thing, but I don't... I'm hesitant to say, Look, show us 21, and then come back and say, you know what? Show me 23 and a half, mm -hmm. and show me show me with some serifs here, and no, and like no, that's I don't think that's our role. I think I will um, say that I, we have tested that internally as well. And I and I appreciate that. And I think this is you, it. Seems like you've put a lot of thought into what you want your design to be and what your proposal is. And I, I think it's our job to say uh, to vote yes or no. Does it comply? Um, so that's, I think, uh, but but then again, I mean, and certainly this is a back and forth, especially given our uh, uh, interesting status here with less than a full board. Um, and so I totally leave it up to the applicant if a particular board member is, uh, you know, not, <laughs> uh, well, wants some, some more information to make a better, to be better able to answer that question, then uh, by all means you can provide that. Sure, but you're very right, Ryan, and I appreciate that, that it isn't our job to, to redesign it, because if I were to ask for 21 inches, that would be just as arbitrary as wanting to see, you know, it, I, I, I didn't, like, do a projection in my head and do all those measurements to, to come up with that. I'm just talking about splitting differences, mm -hmm. and that's not always the best way to make policy. So um, it's just, it, it, is, it is hard to understand one versus the other without visuals. I, I and Ryan has, is also correct that we are voting on just one, not the other. <laughs> so. but, yeah, I just want to be, just reinforce that clarity mm -hmm. that, that our role, I mean, the discussion can go anywhere it wants to go, but our role right now is to, is to act on what's, what the application actually is. Good. And yeah. it's 24 inches with the new font um, made from the materials as, as uh, described by the applicant. Um, and um, I think we probably want to uh, indicate where we where we stand. Uh, I'm favorable. Yeah. So I'm favorable too, and I think that the improvement in the much more accurate model for presentation uh, is a huge uh, step from what was reviewed before, and so that's a big one for me. I think the font is an improvement. Um, I, I like seeing this, it's not a rendering, it's a photograph of the dusk, I'd be much more comfortable if I saw the same sort of representation with daytime. Mm -hmm. um, and I think without that, I'm, I'm gonna be very much on the fence. I'll just give a weather report that I, I'm, I appreciate your hard work and effort and thoughtfulness in putting together this proposal and your very clear efforts to make it fit within both your vision for the space and within our community, so. That's also true. Um, great. Okay, so given the board's given a weather report, obviously I'm recused and will remain recused, so my opinion is of no ilk or matter. Um, not ilk, but um, of no matter. Um, that must be difficult for you. <laughs> <laughs> Extremely. Um, Dan has no opinions. <laughs> that said, you have, I think, I'll frame it as really two and a half choices. Um, one choice is to say, okay, uh, we'll close the evidence and we'll put it before these four people um, based on the weather report and they'll probably take it into a deliberative session and you will get out of the black box what comes out of the black box. Um, the other option is to, um, is to continue. Um, you know, certainly uh, Kate has asked for additional information that would help her clarify if this was continued to our next board meeting there is a high likelihood that the number of board members uh, that would be in attendance would be greater than what you have tonight um, so that your ability to reach for um, votes might be slightly different um, it does push this back two more weeks is the cost of that and so 
I'm sorry. You know, we're a volunteer board, so we I'm can... producing an event in the space on the 22nd, so I wouldn't be able to be here. Uh, okay, so this would be the 21st. Okay. The meeting would be on Monday Mondays, the 21st. I, right. I'm, that's, that's a very, I, I have family flying in from yeah. Alaska that day, so that would be very difficult for me. <laughs> Is there any um, option where people on the board can hear the testimony and issue their vote outside of meeting? Based on the no, video, not, we can't have. No, we other. can't get more information in unless we continue it to a date certain. Um, if you wanted to, well, you wouldn't all need to be there. So, uh, could I? Could I? I'm, I'm sorry. Since we're at about three and a half, <laughs> folks, is there any further, any further information that we can give to to? Do you have access? Them? Well, no, because you want the same I thing. Know. I think it's important to note that the two design professionals on the design review board voted in favor of 24, you know, and I think that this is even better. So I don't know what the other, it's, you don't want to conjecture, well, but you don't know. We've taken all the comments. Okay, I, I, I just like to interject at this point. I, I, yeah. It doesn't it, 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 like it, you know, I, you're right. I get, right. I get what you're, you're saying, yeah. but the you're board right. has a very specific uh, job to do, right. and, and we can't well, we can't we can't go off and. I mean, I I I'd, I'd I'd like to you know have different options available to you. We are a volunteer so, board, and this is what we have. So I think so. If there if you want to provide any more information for us to base our decision on, we need to continue the hearing to a date certain. Oh, I just mean now. Okay, is now, there anything yeah. no, else no, I we don't, can? No. I I don't need any more information. Okay, yeah, so I nobody else needs information but me. Correct. Is that where we are? Yep. But uh, there's no you. But but, but, but so I want to be clear, okay. I mean, th that's okay. That's, yeah. You know, yeah. that, that's, like, that's, that's and it's really up to it's up to the board applicant. with I mean, you you've heard where we're at. It's up to you whether you want to continue it. If you did so, you don't all need to be here. You could provide that additional material to the zoning office in advance. I think one person representing the applicant should be here, but it can be a representative. It doesn't even need to be one of the three of you. Is it white powder? Um, and then, no. and then we can we can just formally accept into the record that evidence that you provided to the zoning administrator, close the evidence, and then and then make a decision then with the new members. So that's that's an option. One thing about this process that um, I didn't put in here, uh, but it's it's a. It's quite, it's quite personal is that this has been the most amazing collaboration I have ever been involved with. Everyone who has been part of this team has been all in to the point where we're staying up very late at night, we're in this project and coming in early in the morning and it's just been quite, you know, really quite incredible. So just to the point of not having everyone here, I think we would we would all want to be here. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate that. I mean, the other option, of course, uh, is but Perhaps we just leave it to a vote. Okay. Um, I mean, well, if you guys want, if you want to take a few minutes too, we, you know, don't. Yeah, well, here's what I guess I would recommend. Here's what I would recommend okay. is, is, this is this we, is a business owner's decision. Right, and and so what, here's what I'd recommend. I mean, I think the board's spoken, so you're not going to get more information necessarily out of the board. Um, your other half option would be, um, we don't, we don't have to continue it to the 21st. We can continue it to the first meeting in November. Um, and I understand that's, uh, that's time. Business is struggling in the meantime. I understand uh, that. With um, the recognition, I mean, we're doing well in the meantime, yeah. but we're struggling with the recognition of the clarity of what we do. I, I'm just laying that out there as yeah. an option. Right. Um, right. So we're eager to. I think our first proposal was um, a couple of months ago. And that felt urgent, <laughs> but you're right. We're, re we're really eager okay. to move forward. Okay. So can you tell you. me though? Is that? Um, if you take the vote, you it's then there's not a that we can't take the option to include other board members after the vote. I mean, obviously that would be yeah, much simpler. Yeah. Then yeah, I don't can't know. Can't reopen the vote. Interesting. I know we can't. Well, we don't have to. We don't have to vote tonight. We just right. we have to close the evidence, mm -hmm. uh, and then we can move it into deliberate session. Whether an additional board member could review the evidence, review the tape, and then participate in a subsequent deliberate session, which we can have whenever we want. Uh, 
I'd, I'd be a little bit leery about that because um, they don't have he, the opportunity to ask you questions. Yeah, I mean that's the whole idea is that we have these. Yeah, no. I, mean, I, 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 I you know what are what our options are as a board, just so that we understand it. As a long-serving board member, I I would be hesitant to go down that road. I, that would be entirely new. Okay. Uh, Not no, to no, say I, that, it, I, that okay. it doesn't have merit because I think so. I think it could under certain circumstances, yep. but. I think I totally appreciate that, and I'm, I'm with you as well. So I'm hearing. So that's the answer, yeah. I'm hearing from you guys, the applicants, that you'd like to close the record. No, I haven't made okay. any decisions. Oh. No, I'm just yeah. Kind of, you're the still. So I mean, maybe the three of you need to just what? step out for like a no, five no, no, minute break I'm and discuss. No, no, no. I'm still just trying to get clarity. If you yeah. vote, so the, the, if and it's three to one, can we then include the other members? No, no. no. It, that's the decision. Would be to appeal that decision to the. Vermont Superior Court Environmental Division. Which Can I ask no, the other or, option? Or, or do a new application. application. Or submit a different a different application. Right. right. So substantially 20, enough different. 25 yeah. inches. Well, right. Can I <laughs> can I ask you if you're gonna vote yes before you vote? Um um I've given my weather report. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. On the fence. Sorry. No. And, no and I am continuing to think all. and deliberate yeah, honestly and as we go through this. So. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Thank you. That's what, what, um, I think Tali was talking about is like the daytime, nighttime, the things that you've looked at, mm -hmm. we've looked at. We've looked at all those things. And I I, and I just, you know, one of the I things wish it could be this really bright. <laughs> I don't think it you know, ever would be. Oh, for sure. Yeah, you know, yeah. because you bring in too much and mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's all gaudy. Look at, look at all that we have. Yeah. And, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, do, do you have access from here can somebody from your office send you the daytime rendering if you've done a daytime photo my office is closed okay no nope. uh, I just didn't know sorry. if you had remote access through I, anything or if I, you emailed it to somebody and it's on your phone because um, we can you as long as you then emailed it to me afterwards so you can hard. show them I just didn't know if you had it I'm but just try, I'm trying to help preclude Bill. the vote yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 we'll still have to continue it till I think another time uh, I mean, we've I had mean, people show the stuff on their phones. Took, okay. Just look at these. Yep. You know, the difference. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, isn't, it oh. isn't necessarily. Well, there's five out of eight that use the design. whole width of it. You know, once it, it looks like what you see. <laughs> Is there, so wait, if you vote no, then what's the next step? Excuse so, me, I don't. Okay, so if there's a, a no vote, procedurally speaking, um, you have the option to appeal as Ryan indicated to the environmental division of the Superior Court. Oh, no, no, we don't want to do that. And or, but no, no, if or, we can. Or if I can finish, um, you can reapply. With a uh, different design. That's with, what you were with saying? A, with a different design. They have what's known as the successive application doctrine, which means you can't turn around and give us the same 24-inch um, design, but if mm -hmm. you change it, in part along the lines of what you've done here, um, you know, you can reapply and the DRC can, it would go back to the DRC under a new application. And if they approved it, you'd never see us again. Mm -hmm. um, so that's though that's sort of the no option um, if, if you don't get the four votes tonight. That seems like the best to have them vote. I think so. I have, have I feel good about this design. I'd love your vote. I would appreciate it. Yeah. So just a quick, well, I guess we'd have to, would we be looking at going into an executive session or, yeah, okay. I think, I think procedurally yeah. enough of that and clearly the board would want to, yeah. um, I think that would be the best option to mm -hmm. go forward. Okay. So, so you wouldn't get, know what the vote was tonight? if we do this, because it would go into executive session, which means that part is not public. Deliberative session. Yeah. We would yeah, leave deliberative when session. you talk about it now. Mm -hmm. We'd find you, out tomorrow. You would have that tonight? They'd have it tonight, and they most likely, I, I can just say, and this is just on historic, again, on historic precedent, is that when we have gone into deliberative sessions, we have generally, as a board, resolved them that night, um, although there are exceptions, and, um, than generating a written decision off of that that vote, but likely to be voted on or appro approved tonight um, for that or rejected approved tonight. Approved tonight, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's generally the process they go through, and that's the 
it would be a deliberative session with the board members that are voting. So. Well, I would appreciate the opportunity okay. to do that. I, I want to give you another piece of information. This, this, this is personal. This helps me just really know where I stand. I think the one thing that would help me understand this better and you know you can you can do image images and renderings like till the cows come home and I know that clients probably drive you crazy um, and, and development reports perhaps um, I, I would really feel better if I saw this in the daytime a, a daytime version of this if that was here tonight I would be a lot clearer on on what I want to do um, okay. and as, as Bill said you can't know what to bring you can't bring every angle of the sunshine in every season um, that's too much paper and too much time, too much, too many hours on a project. Um, so I respect that. Um, but if I'm being honest, that's sort of that's my hang-up right now is understanding the daytime because evening's pretty. <coughs> and if you've got that though, the next deliberation would. Well, no. If I can send it tonight, correct? No. Well, we no. would need it like. We have, to, we have to continue it. If you if you could pull it up, if you could access it like in within 15 minutes. It, show it to us. Yeah. Like, yeah. If you could access it hearing. now. It's just that I would also need a paper, something to print Later. out to add into the record after the hearing. But if you could get it on your phone now or in the next, yeah, 10, 15 minutes to show everybody, then I, I think I we that might help. Applies a lot of pressure. We, we don't normally do that. So, uh, yeah. We've done that. We've I, I done really, that in some. What aspect are you trying to? The, like the brightness. I, I can't so get any more specific than I already have. I've, I, but, I can't, but there's I, criteria that you're using to see whether this works, and, and this so is, that it fits in, so that it's a yeah, story. It's the character. It's less about the historic part, and actually one thing I think is very interesting that I want to compliment you on is you've got this, this historic brickwork in the second and third stories, and then you're kind of taking it into a new era with the first floor, and there's a contrast there that is very neat and exciting and I think appropriate. Some people would probably say it has to be exactly the same, first to third. I'm not one of those people. Um, but it has to do with harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district and how, how the massing of the letters feels at different times of day. And I'm, I'm sorry if that's frustrating, but it's, it's where I am. No apologies, yeah. you see. This is what you're here to do. Thank you. Um, I, don't, I don't know that it's fair to ask you to scramble to do something mm -hmm. professional in 15 minutes yeah. when well, it's almost 9 o'clock. Well, yeah. yeah. and and this, this is where I really think we need to be careful because I don't, okay. I don't yeah. want the board to get backed into a corner either. Right. If, mm -hmm. that, if that little you know, four-inch screen rendering mm. right. is going to be right. difficult to, to evaluate against what we have, yeah. I would really caution that we should okay. stick with what we know. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate yeah, that. I mean, I have had people send me things and I can run downstairs and print it out. Yeah, if I think that's possible. Yeah. If it's something that she uh, already had. Either, do you want to do you want to provide more information and also have more people review the application? Yeah. This is your this is your do you want to do you want to provide more information and have additional people review and vote on the application or do you want the four people who have sort of indicated to you where you're at, where we're at, vote with what you've had right now? That's the decision. Um, you don't want us to enter anything new tonight. I don't. I, I think it's. I don't think it's. I don't think it's feasible. I, well, no, I, think, I, just, I, don't, I don't. I think it's, the, I think it's too much. The, the the feedback you're getting from the board is that you know it's quarter to nine. We don't want you to rush and create something right. that's going to be. Um, that's not going to be up to the standard of the the rest of the stuff you've given, and also going to force us to then uh, or force the board to review something sort of on the fly. It would be different, I think, if you had it sort of prepared. Um, but, you know, what the board has said is that, you know, they would, another piece of information would help them evaluate. Now, obviously, we don't, those a board redesign your application. You make, you've put your application forward, it's complete. It's, you know, this is just the board saying, this would help us make our decision. Um, I, no. I, I think if I had five or ten minutes, I, I think I could pull together a daytime view of this. I think um, the reason that we're going to go to any length we can is because you have a business that's opened a month ago. Mm -hmm. They took a huge risk on downtown Montpelier, and now Montpelier is having a hard time making a decision, and we're trying to work with every little bit of it. But, and excuse me for being a little emotional, but this is hard to see someone invest their you know their their life and, and energies into and go through these kind of 
pieces that are that are happening like this. So okay. I, I don't mean that as condemnation. I just want that to be kind of the why, context. why you see us really working hard to get you what we believe is a is a is a really great design for downtown. Well and I think that submitting the additional evidence would be really helpful too because I think that you would find what you're looking for in it. I have a lot a lot of confidence about that. Um, if I didn't, I would say, we should do a continuance, whatever, but I, I have a, a lot of confidence that maybe what you're looking for is what you will see in the rendering. So Possibly. let's and, take- And if it, if it doesn't, that, I mean, that is also a possibility. Right, it's then we would return point. to the DRC, and cetera, that's totally, so we let's, understand. It's not like- Let's um, take, yeah. let's take it- this, then that. Yeah. Hold on. At yeah. All. Yeah. Let's yeah. take a 10 minute break. Okay. Um, and we'll go off, we'll take a 10 minute uh, break, and then we'll come back. And we'll make decisions based on, you know, we'll make no decisions until we come back. Thank you thank all you. so much for the process. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Really. Thank you. All right. We are back on the record. Uh, I will simply note that during the break, there were no ex parte conversations that I witnessed and none that any other board members wish to report. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So I understand you took the time to do up a... Yes. Uh, more evidence. We prepared a daytime shot of the uh, rabble rouser uh, per request. So I'll pass okay. these around. Thank Great. you, Meredith, for doing these so quickly. Actually You're welcome. Thank you for your Absolutely. technological aptitude to whip yeah. it up. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. I'll share it with Meredith. Oh, I just got Oh, excellent. Are these people always going to be so blurry? Are these? <laughs> well, <laughs> can't <Spirit>. say. Oh, is that kind of espresso? Divination practices. They're excited. They're in motion. <laughs> Thank you for this additional information. Absolutely. Okay. Is there anything else that the board would wish to? Um, you know, not to sing it out, Kate, but is this close to what you were looking for? Or is this, this is what I was looking for and gives me more to think about to try and answer my questions and concerns. Okay. And it's really amazing, and I just want to note it's unusual for someone to whip that up so quickly and really does go above and beyond. I think it's probably not our typical practice, um, but I appreciate it. Happy to do it. Thank you. Um, anything else from the rest of the board? Okay. Uh, so, this is this is the decision. Um, we can two options. We can put it to a vote tonight, um, close the re evidentiary record, um, or continue it to October twenty first, which was our next regularly scheduled meeting. We're gonna go for the vote, Mr. Chair. I think yes. that, I think at this point it, it could, uh, that we should, if if we're gonna go ahead. Uh, uh, that we should uh, uh, close the public hearing and move to deliberative session. I, I agree with that. And I just wanted to see if the applicant now that, you know, because we hadn't made any decisions before we broke for that 10 minutes, still wanted to go forward with the vote tonight and close the record. Yeah, I feel really confident about your guys' judgment. And if it's not the right sign, then I think we can work on it and make it better for you. Okay. Great. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Uh, so so um, I'll make a motion to close the evidentiary hearing for the application, sign application for 60 Main Street, and adjourn the hearing. Uh, we'll, well, we'll wait till we'll adjourn the hearing for our next thing. Close the evidence um, and, uh, and move into deliberative move session. Move into deliberative session after the adjournment of the remainder of our public hearing. Excellent. Okay, motion by Ryan. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Kate. Any further discussion? All those eligible to vote, uh, please do so by raising your right hand in the affirmative if you choose so. Okay. And I recuse myself. This is the evidentiary record is closed. Matter is moved into deliberative session. Um, thank you very much for your vigorous presentation as well as uh, going above and beyond with presenting the supplemental evidence. Um, the board will render a decision and presumably will be communicating that to you as quickly as possible. Um, that leaves us with the 
sole item of other business. Our next regularly scheduled meeting is for Monday, October 21st, 2019, two weeks from tonight. Any other business that the board wishes to take under consideration? Hearing none, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn the public hearing. Motion by Ryan. Do I have a second? Second. Second by well. Rob. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. All right, we are adjourned.